Wake up, goddammit. Hey, welcome to the Tires Longino Show. If you haven't already, make sure you download the official Tires Longino Show mobile app, available right now on Android and iOS. Download and turn on your post notification. Sign up is free. You can also subscribe to become a member. And then, you know, pay, you know, monthly, yearly, however you want to do it, you know what I mean? But um, that's for exclusive content. Um, and other things, you know, prizes, tickets, and everything like that. So download the Taj Longino Show app. My guest today comes from the East Coast. Um, he has a movement. Help us become better, Mr. Hub. And his, 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 his movement was inspired by somebody close to him. <laughs> you know, um, we're going we're gonna to get into that. Uh, the challenge that this person put on him. And it has been his, and it turned into a lifelong passion. His, right. um, his why and his mission and his, and his purpose and his goal. Welcome to the show, Mr. Hub. How you doing? I'm good, brother. Thank you for having me, man. And I love it the way you came in the show. Wake up. God damn it. I love Wake it. Wake up, that's, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's so dope right there, man. Thank you for having me, bro. I mean, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for taking the time out to speak with us. Um, because what you're doing in the community is something that so many are doing, but everybody's doing it in their own way, right? Yeah. And so I want to get off into a bit of the story. Then we're gonna then I'm gonna take you. We're gonna take people on the journey, right? We're gonna take people on the journey. We're gonna bring them all the way back around. So if you could, for those who are unaware, mm -hmm. unfamiliar, they need to be educated. Need to be woken up. You know, wake up yeah, right, to right. who you are. Uh, let them know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my name is Altry Best, but affectionately known as Mr. Hub because of the, the work that I do in the community. Hub standing for help us become better. But about 17 years ago, my life changed, man. My um, my son literally put a charge on me to do more for my community because of a traumatic experience that we had um, experienced in the city of Newark. Like, my sons grew up in, in Rawway, which is a little bit more suburban. And I grew up in Newark, New Jersey, which is definitely urban and, um, you know, poverty is high over there right so you know my children's mother would always talk about how bad north was and i would always defend north and it came to a point where she she wouldn't even let me bring my children to north so this one particular day she finally said yes let's go we going to a cookout all right i grabbed my sons we we you know coming across bergen and clinton avenue and uh literally these guys was beating up on another guy. And uh, it was crazy because my son's witnessing this whole thing. They seen the blood, they seen them literally stomping on this guy. Then my 14 year old son says to me, dad, he has a gun. So at this point I'm, you know, panicking, trying to get my sons out of harm's way. We was only about three blocks away from where we were going, but it seemed like a lifetime in that, in that couple of minutes happened all of this stuff happened, everything that I was trying to avoid my sons from seeing. We got past the light, seen a police officer on the next corner. So I told the police officer what was going on. He made this big U-turn to go back. But as he was going back the other way, we heard a gunshot. Something inside of me exploded. I started yelling and screaming at my sons. You see what just happened? Blah, blah, blah. Because I'm I'm embarrassed that they seen what I was trying to you know keep them away right. from. And especially about what their mama was talking about, right. right? So in the midst of my ranting and raving, my my 14 year old says to me, he says, uh, dad, you always talk about being part of the solution, not part of the problem. Like, what are you doing about it? And he had this shaking his head and all, like, what? you know, not told him, I said, shut up, you hear what I'm just, you know, I, I went off on him because- yeah, you was in the moment, you was emotional. Yeah, it was, it was in, in the, the moment. moment. I reacted and, it, and, you know, literally, I got back to the to the well. I, we got to the cookout, and I hugged them and I apologized because I snapped on him, and he didn't totally understand it then. But as I start breaking it down to him, I never wanted you guys to see what I grew up to, right? But when he said it, it was like my son had just called me a hypocrite. <laughs> right. My son had just stabbed me in the heart and told me, you know that I should be doing something. I'm talking about it, but I ain't doing nothing about it. And it, it did something to me. It did something to my soul that I felt like I would never be in that situation ever again where somebody asked me 
what was I doing for my community, especially me being a parent and not having an answer to doing something for your community, it changed my life. That's our responsibility to, to make the our, our lives, our community a better place for our children to grow up in. And I wasn't doing it, right? Even though I felt like I was in the music business, I'm doing this and that and third, and I'm taking care of you know, my, my children, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm thinking that's it. Nah, he was like, that ain't enough. <laughs> From that point on, I said to myself, I said, my son put a charge on me. I'm never going to be in that position ever again. Somebody asks me what I'm doing and I not have an answer. And I have it. Like 17 years later, I, you know, I started a nonprofit back then, but I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to serve. And here we are, man. And back of me, all these awards for all of the years of doing this work and just really committed to the cause. And my philosophy was like, entertain them, educate them, empower them, right? Like utilize what saved my life. Music saved my life. I promise you, if I didn't know how to rhyme, if, if I wasn't, you know, who I was in, in my little community, I hung around with all of the bad dudes. So like all my friends was into some no good shit. And they seen this talent in me and pushed me to, nah, nah, we, you getting in the studio, you gonna do this, blah, blah, blah. We, you ain't, this ain't for you. Right. And, and, and that saved my life, man. Like, like literally, and it carried me through life to, to so many things, but we'll talk about that later as we go on in this interview. But the music has been instrumental in every part of my life, even though I let it go to do this community work, it, it still kept coming back. So you want to hear God laugh, tell him what you got planned. Cause I swear I was supposed to be the next Rock Kim, LL, Cool J, KRS, One, Tupac, all mixed in one. <laughs> so I just thought I was it, but you know, God had another plan. You know, it's funny you brought, you know, you mentioned that uh, because me growing up, I grew up in Atlanta. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. I was born in College Park, and but I was raised in Indianapolis. Right, I'm still here, and my favorite rapper, now mind you, born in Atlanta, right. raised in Indianapolis, so that's South and Midwest. Right. My favorite rapper to this day is Too Short. Oh, I love it. You know what I mean? So when I started my rap career, which was short lived, mm -hmm. I dropped up my first project. It's a Players World. Gotcha. And you know, you can hear too short all through the type of, you know what I mean? Because that's that was just my, my favorite rapper. Yeah, and you couldn't, like you just said, you couldn't have told me I wasn't gonna make it. I had what we call an official hit record back then. Right, right. The players world, and it was moving. Mm -hmm. But they didn't tell me how much money it costs to keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> and, and being yeah. in the right spot in the right location and meeting the right DJ or meeting the right producer or meeting, you know, and, and being being in the right circles and I dropped hey, another, yo. I, Yeah, I dropped the, I dropped my <laughs> second one. And after that I said, man, I'm putting out more money, they'll get back. And I, I got I got kids. Right. I gotta get to work. You know what I mean? So I kind of put it I just put it to the side and it, and it and if you are the way I am when it comes to the music, you still mm -hmm. do it to this day. You still oh, hear sure. a beat. You still yes, hear some new music and you'll freestyle <laughs> and listen, right down the spot just to listen. listen. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I never was like I never was the great freestyler, right? Like everything to me was like writing down, and and it's funny that we had we having this conversation because my 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 peoples were telling me the other day they remember me grabbing toilet paper and anything I could write. Because I wanted my thoughts down. I wanted to put right. my rhymes down. It was like, it didn't matter like what. I was going to write it down so I could put it together later. So I, I, I kind of felt like, it's crazy. I felt like I never wanted to spit no whack shit. So <laughs> I wasn't freestyling. I, I just wasn't doing that because I had to make sure my shit was on point. Like, you know, so it was, it was crazy, man. Because I, I know some phenomenal freestylers, man, that just off the head and be on point. But that wasn't me. I had to write my shit down, and I'm I'm being transparent about that. I I had to go and write it down and make sure that my shit was right. And me and you are the same in that regard because I'm not really a freestyler. I would just hear something, mm -hmm. and I'd be riding in my car, and I'd just start trying to okay, okay man, this is cold. What can I come up with? But when I actually put my albums together, yeah, I I you, you want to know what I put my first. 
think my both my albums together. I wrote them both when I was at work. Yeah. On the clock. Because you sitting yeah. there for 10 hours, eight hours. Yeah. You yeah. got, you know what I mean? You got all day and your mind just wandering. So I would write, I write a line down here, line mm-hmm. there, put it together yep. later on. You know That's what I right. mean? I wrote I wrote both my both my albums on the clock. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Any, any way I could, I was rhyming and writing. I was a neighborhood celebrity, man. And it carried me through life, man. I was homecoming king. I was all that. So so I was popular because I was able to rhyme. But then when, when I was doing it heavily, yeah, I came against, across the Naughty by Natures and the Lords of the Underground and Red Mans and all of them. So oh, it, it was it was all that competition. I, I grew up rapping with them. OK, so. Why did you stop the music? You could have you could have actually been more impactful doing the music and having the community because you know how it goes. Celebrity and anything a celebrity does, especially if they're celebrity that people like and they and they and they mess with, then you could have really. So why did you stop the music when you could have really kept doing it and then kind of. Was it? Yeah, I want that's yeah, that's good. Why did I stop? I, I, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real with you, man. I, I it was a, a point where my manager man said to me, "You can't serve both gods, right? <laughs> like you can't serve two gods." And and everything in my life was music. Like I was smart as all heavens. You know, I was top of my class. I could have went to any college. I had scholarships. Everything revolved around the music, and I knew that I couldn't do nothing without music. So when my son put this charge on me to do for my community, it was like, I got to put my all in it. You know, unfortunately, my name is not unfortunately, fortunately, my last name is best. Right. So I, it was always a competition with me to be the best version that I can be. If I was going to do it, I was going to excel at it. Every job I've ever had, I've excelled to be supervisor and all that because I wanted to, I wanted to always be the best of what I could be. And dealing with trauma throughout my life like I couldn't focus like I, there was a, like a tunnel vision that I had to do this because my goal was to get us out of the community out of the hood get my mom my mom you know love her to death man like so much stuff that she put us through that we survived through community and and seeing the trauma that we we experienced I was like I gotta get her out of this and so music was everything music was gonna be my ticket so it was like I couldn't do both. Either you gonna do one and be great at it, and, or something else. And I became great at doing the community work because what I realized now that that was a part of me all along. Right. I've been I had been doing community work, but didn't identify with that was that was community work because even when I was doing music, I was bringing artists together. Right. I didn't I didn't have that knowledge to fight back with my my son when he asked that question because I could have easily be like. Well, what about I bring all these artists? <laughs> like, no, nah, that's not that's not enough. That's not what I was talking about, Dad. But yeah, I had to choose one or the other, and I couldn't really. In my um, mind, um, I want to go back to a few key. I want to go back to a few things that you said when you were telling the story. But I want to ask this: What made you? What was the voice in your head, or some in you that told you to listen to your son? and respond to it in the way you did by starting a nonprofit. I mean, most parents would just be like, you know, you know how we are, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I'm, about to spend, I'm about to spend these raps. These raps is what's going to get us, you know, right. I can help the community with this money. You know, you know how, we, you know what I'm saying? So what made you, what was what was it about what he said, how he said, it, when he said it, that made you say, you know what, damn, make you stop and think and, and then wanted to, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and, what made you want to do that? What, what was it in, in that? I, I didn't figure it out until maybe three years into doing the, the uh, nonprofit, but it was what I had been through in life. Like watching my mom be a community mom where she let everybody into the house. Like my bad friends, even though they weren't doing what they were supposed to do, she let them into the house, right? You know, like. The, the church I actually was going through, they would they would take us on community events and stuff like that and and literally do stuff for us. So at that moment when my son said that to me, I felt like I was doing a disservice to those people who've done stuff for me. 
and something the same way I look for it now for the light to come on and these young people that I work with, the light came on for me. Like, oh shit. Like, damn, I'm not paying it forward. And my son just called me on. And that was enough for me to say, you know what? Never again. Never again will but you call you know, me. I'm, I'm gonna show you. There's, a, there's so much to unpack in that conversation alone. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a 30 minute conversation just about that conversation alone and what it meant. Yep. Yep. First of all, let's look at what happened. A young black boy and a grown black man were able to have a conversation in right. the heat of the moment. Nobody got beat up. Nobody got right. severely hurt. Nobody got cussed out. None of that. Mm -hmm. It was a res mutual respect. It was a bond that's already been built. It was a relationship that's been there. And he right. was able to take what was said as criticism, you know, constructive criticism, mm -hmm. and utilize it to fuel you to now doing what you're doing 17 years later. Right. That, to explain how big that was, that 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 is for you, because a lot of sons and fathers are just sons and fathers. They don't yeah. have that relationship to where we can have uh, a discussion of that magnitude, and it, and and the, and the parent recognizes it, right? and then responds mm -hmm. in the way that you did. It, it, exactly. The, and that's the reason why I say that he put a charge on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I feel like my son put a charge. Of course, he could have said it in, in you know, in, in general context, I could have just let it go. But I felt like he had challenged me, you know, and we always been open. Like, mm -hmm. to, he was 14 years old. So his, in his life, I'm always teaching him lessons, talking about life and preparing him if he ever, when he start driving, what to do if he get pulled over by the police. So I'm giving him all these lessons and his ass gave me a lesson. He shot it back to me. So it was like, well, damn, I give this information to him, but I'm not really executing it outside. So, all right, yeah, I got to do something. And it felt good because I think it was the third year I got awarded for, for the first time I got awarded for the work that I was doing in the community and I brought my son on stage, right? He never knew, that's why I started the organization. So oh, I told wow. this story. I told this story and 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 we we cried, we both on stage crying, accepting this award. But I was like, here, because, because of you is why I did this and why I do this work, right? And you know, today they, they're proud of me. My, my four sons are proud of me for doing the work that I can have do in the community. But we have these adult conversations now where even though they're proud of me, right? And we can be real on this show. Like, even though they're proud of me, they there was a part of them that said, you know, I wish I could have had more of my dad because I had to share my dad with the community. And that's, right? and that's the, and that's the, the damn if you do, then yeah. I'll catch 22, right? If I'm mm -hmm. out, now let's now let's go back to the rapping. Now yeah. let's say you'd have got a deal or something. You really mm -hmm. wouldn't have been around, right? You'd have been on the road right. in the studio right. all the time. So it, it's you, 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 <laughs> you can't be everywhere at all times, right? right. If you're out earning a living as a man, you see yep. it's the narrative in the that everybody's pushing that these days that the man still has to take care of everything. So if he's had to take care of everything, guess where he's not? He you can't see this? be home if he has to be able to take care of everything. Oh, I wore this on purpose. Man what don't work, man don't work, man don't eat. And there <laughs> it know? is. You know, <laughs> I, I had to take care of my family, so and I and I understood that. I understood it because I watched my mom struggle and you know, working two jobs, still watching us, you know, uh helping us with homework, making sure we the best dressed, all that stuff. She struggled. To, to make sure that I was, and, and here's the key thing. I think that's crucial for why I do what I do today. At five years old, she instilled in us, perceive it, believe it, achieve it. Mm. You can be anything you want, right? Perceive it, believe it, achieve it. And I, I didn't really totally understand it at that point, but she kept pushing to us, like whatever you want, whatever your mind can conceive, you can be it. You just gotta believe it and work toward it. And, and it makes so much sense now that I'm able to talk to other young people and instill it. But here's the flip side of that, right? These kids that I work with, most of them, the, the, the community throw away, right? No public schools, no police department want to lock them up and stuff because they dealing with shit that they don't understand. 
And then you got the home life or the, the community around them telling them they ain't gonna be shit. They ain't never, they ain't shit, they ain't gonna never be shit. So you start to believe that. For me, it was my mom telling me I could be anything that I want to be. I just had to believe it. If I believed it, then I could be that. But the same thing, the flip side, if somebody telling you ain't gonna be shit, you start to believe that too. Right. You know, and that's where this trauma happens where I felt so deeply involved to trying to change that. You know, music saved my life, man. I promise you. If I wasn't doing music, I would have been out there with, with my guys because I was smart enough to maneuver. But I had a talent that they pushed me away and they seen something in me to keep me from in that shit. My eyes done seen some shit that I shouldn't have seen. Yeah. And and so and it's it matters so much to to impact in this conversation because so many layers yeah, to man. first of all, let's go back to moms, right? Yes. Positive reinforcement. Yes. Now some kids could let that go on one end, not the other. I ain't trying to hear that shit. Yeah. You you internalized it. Internalized. So when, when now you're having kids, you're giving yeah. them positive, you know what I mean? You're giving them that same positivity. Right. So now you pack it on. Yeah, you pack it on. Now they have a chance to internalize it or let it go on one end, not the other, and just right. keep it going. Um right. your guys in the corner, they loved you enough to keep you away. Yeah. So many of y'all pull you in. Yeah. give you a sack and tell you, look, I want my money back and I don't care about that's none right. of that. You, that's you right. You ain't going to send another rap you mess, you mess with my money. Right. But you know how it is. The streets loved you enough. And, they, and we know the streets. But the streets, ain't no love in the streets. Ain't no honor yeah, amongst thieves. Right. But they loved you enough to keep you away. So yeah, now I got a question. I want to ask a question about that. Are they still around? And did you, yep. did you thank them for not pulling you into the streets absolutely like you look look i got i got some of them 40 plus year relationship with them not today like the ones that's still here right yeah. it's uh, unfortunately i lost a lot right i lost a lot of them because you know as i started to gain understanding and you know uh wanting them to be better and, and show them something different because they pushed me some of them just never left that alone and end up you know being killed or locked up somewhere and and i still love them i still thank them to the day because think about it i wouldn't be who i am today to be able to maneuver the way that i can maneuver in the community if i didn't have that right mm -hmm. if i was sheltered somewhere in suburbia and stuff like that i couldn't maneuver in the, in north i can't maneuver through the city and, and and then still had the respect that I have in the community and and still be able to create relevant programming because I understood exactly what they was going to because I'm that I, I was that kid I just got a break somebody loved me enough to tell me what I could do what I could be instead of telling me what I couldn't be and I was I was smart enough at that time to believe it right I, I believe that I could be something right I didn't let those negative because it was people that told me you wasn't gonna be shit, but I, I didn't believe that because my foundation told you my mama right, was strong. telling me earlier before I was into that you could be anything you want to be. So when a negative came, I was already prepared for when a negative come that my brain was already thinking, yeah, you can be whatever you want. Forget what they say. You know, sometimes it get rough though, you know. Yeah. It ain't always peaches and cream and peaches and cream, but the reality of it is it was enough for me to know my worth that I could be anything that I wanted to be and all I had to do was work for it. So I'm a worker. Man, it's Today so I'm many, a it's so many you gotta, gems. Be, you gotta be excited, man. Yeah. <laughs> I told you we was gonna have a good I just I told you this is what this what this is what we was gonna do. Um yeah, 25 minutes into this conversation, man, and it, so many lessons and jewels within that first 25 and i hope people catch it first of all the trust that your mm -hmm. kid's mother think about this and i wanted to go back to this it was That's a blessing dope, this. I, I never thought about that right there i see where you're going and now this is my first time ever thinking about that right there like wow she had enough trust to allow you to take your kids and the blessing in disguise 
was it supposed to they were supposed to see that it was supposed right. to happen because your son was gonna let it supposed to tell you you're not doing your job which let so all that happened for a reason that's crazy now in the crazy. moment i know because i got a i got I got two baby. I already know. I know. I know what you was thinking as a dad. I damn. I gotta hear a damn mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. Yo, I, I was embarrassed, bro. I was everything <laughs> scared to go home. Like, like, cause they gonna tell her. You know. Man, I know thing. what you was thinking. Cause I went through the. I went through the same thing. And I know the words that she was saying. I knew I should let them go with you. I already, yeah. I already know. Yeah. yeah. I had my daughter. I had my kids, one day we was at the grocery store. I tell the story real quick. One day we was at the grocery store and they were, I don't know how old they were at this time, but they were still little, right? right. And I'm literally, literally, my son, my daughter's standing right behind me. My son is right behind her. And we are like a few feet away from the counter. I get mm. to the counter, I turn around, my daughter gone. Mm. And I said, what the? I said, T, where is she? Oh no, you know he. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm panicking. First thing in my mouth, I gotta call this girl's mama and tell her I done lost the, I done lost our daughter. Oh right. my god, hell no! Nah. I self really shut the whole, I was gonna <laughs> shut the whole grocery store down. Nobody, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> no, nobody <laughs> going my, nowhere. My Long story short, man, I looked up and I don't even know how she did this. She was coming from all the way from the other end of the grocery store. Look at that. You know what I mean and. It, it's, but I, when you was telling me the story, I already knew what she was thinking. I already yeah, knew what she was gonna think. I, that's what I get for letting them. That's what I get for letting them go with you. Not that, but in hindsight, she still trusts you enough, and it, all that worked out for is good, and, and, and it had to happen. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it was a blessing in disguise that all it was supposed to work out the way it did. No, absolutely. And, and the sad part about this story is my oldest son. You know the one that put the charge on me he he will not come to north period to till this day he's still traumatized will not come to north no one had nothing to do with north so no way no shape no form no, tried I, to get him help tried okay, to get so him help is he still when i tell him where he lives of course but is he still in the parameter you know in the in the on the coastline somewhere is, he's, he's still on the coastline but 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 he he in the suburbia part, so you know he he won't cross them lines. He's like nah, like if you talk about North to him, he get offended, you know. Like and he's doing well for himself, but he's just like his mindset is still traumatized. He still sees that event, that 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 traumatic experience that happened. And and of course I've learned then, and now I'm certified victim advocate, so I try to talk to him. He don't want hit. Don't want to get no help. They did a big story on me a couple years ago, and they wanted to talk to him. He was like, "Hell no, I don't want to talk about. It. Like, I don't, you know, I don't want to go back there. Like, his his brain just like nah, no triggers him. But today, you know, and and I'm pretty sure you said this to him. He, he, I, I know he's aware that it just ain't in North. It's everywhere right. now. I try to tell him that. I try to explain all that, but you know. You know, he coming to his own, like now he has a son right now and these lessons he's now going to be able to see for himself, like what you got to do to protect your, your children. You can't keep them away from it. And as much as, you know, I I, I did hear their mama I, I and I understood what she was saying, but for me, I am who I am and I can survive anywhere because of what I experienced in North, right? Because of how I survived North. And that, that ain't, of course it ain't for everybody. But I want him to not be oblivious that the rest of the world it can happen outside your door, you know. So yeah, these are the they, things they do travel to the, the streets, do travel to the suburbs to get it popping. Where we know, <laughs> <laughs> so, we we know, man. Like it's crazy. And and then while they was growing up, they seen situations just like that, right? Because I know we going up off into something else, but yeah, me and their mom because I was from North. And she was from Rollway. Like the Rollway people didn't look like the fact that I was from North dating that girl. So we got it popping. You know, my my yeah. guys from North would come. Yo, yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's why I said like I done survived some things, right? Yeah. You know, but it shouldn't have happened. But the reality with them seeing all of that trauma now. The North thing just got him so like you know because my guy came and wrecked shit. They came and 
let right, let right, Roy right, know. Right. <laughs> they tried to jump me at the prom, bro. You you you, in your opinion, right? Yes, sir. From your experience, is it now when you look back on it? Do you feel like still that you should have kept your kids away, or should they experience a little so they understand not oblivious to what's really going on out here? No, I believe that everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. You know, like my my only worry is that at some point my son gets the understanding enough that he needs to get some help, so get some therapy to get past that, right? To get past that, because what he's going to do is going to pass that down to his yeah, his child, yeah. You know, my grandson. You know, and and I, I worry about that. You know, so my 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 younger sons, they didn't know it with me all the time, right? And, 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 and they grew up in suburbia, but I made sure that they got a piece of this. Be I, I guess now, think about hindsight, because of that situation, I was like, oh no, y'all gonna get a taste of this and understand this and be with me so y'all can see it's not as bad. You just gotta maneuver differently. You right. know what I'm saying? So, and you, yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's a fear. It could just be a fear because you don't want nothing to happen to, you know, to yourself, you know? <laughs> but it's just, like I was in New Jersey once. Mm -hmm. um, we was lost in New Jersey, headed to New York. We got this big old rap vehicle, right? And oh, we, oh man, yeah, yeah. So we we in the this is 2019. Yeah. We just we drove it. We was driving to New York for an event. Right. It was matter of fact. I tell you when it was. Raekwon, the what was it the purple tape? Okay. It okay. Time, I believe it was. Yeah, it was around that. It was round. It was for that album, I believe. Anywho, we in New Jersey. I don't even know how we got to New Jersey, but we in New Jersey, riding around trying to find our way. Luckily, somebody we we, we stopped the right person, <laughs> and he said, "Look, man, get over that bridge." Quick. Yeah, quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> go that way and get over that bridge because it was about to be rush hour. So whatever it is about Russia and that bridge that goes yeah. to New York, we supposed yeah. to have been over that bridge before it all went bad. Yeah, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. So they got us out of New Jersey right on time. Nice. I know about New Jersey Drive. <laughs> I know about a few things. Yeah. So yeah, we 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 was in New Jersey for a split second, and they got us they got us out of there because they was like, if you get stuck over here in that big loud van y'all in, it's it's it's, 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 it's over. Yeah, yeah, because because we can spot with people that don't belong here, man. You know, and it's, it's crazy to even even frame it like that. But that that was the reality of Newark, man. At that time, man, like you know. If you you ain't here, you 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 can end up a victim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that was that. So let's get coming back. But I just wanted to touch on those two things because yes, to me it's important to to identify to show the relationship that a son, a black son, and a black father can have. Yeah. Because the stigma is always that we not you know you know it's a negative it's a negative stigma around the relationship right. between son and father. And so the fact that you and him were able to do that. We could have had a whole episode on that experience and conversation exactly. alone. Absolutely. Being the mother, that's a whole nother conversation. Right. Right. For trusting for trusting you. Finding some something in her to say, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna let him go with you. Right. And then she and didn't not, beat me up. And she yeah, didn't beat me up it as bad you. as I thought. Yeah. Right. And then not not keeping the kids away from you when they once she found out what happened, because it had nothing to do with you. I mean, it wasn't right. nothing that you had did. But still, yeah. still having that trust to not to hold the kids back. It's so much in that right there alone. Right, right. <laughs> so that, I just wanted to make sure we, we didn't just overlook that. Like it was you know, I mean, just another day. No, we need to, that, that needed to be, you know, we need to spend some time on that. So um, you're in North Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. And. I don't know. I'm, you gotta help me with geography. I don't know how far that is from Philly and all that other stuff up and down that coast right there. Yeah. But um, you know, there was there, there's a and I cannot think of his name right now, but he's big on social media and he's from Philly and he always does these videos reenacting this about situations that go on and give people lessons within that. They tried to kill him. Oh wow! The same streets that he that he goes online every day. 
mm-hmm. and he works with kids and he was in the streets at one point. Um, they actually shot up his car. Oh man. You know, man. so I, I said that to say this, have you, in your time working with the community and, you know, risking, you know, putting yourself in a vulnerable space as well. Have you ever had to deal with the negative side of that on, because you know, you got some people ain't happy that you out trying to say the streets, the streets is where they make their money. The streets is how they, you know what I mean? So for, for, for those who are happy that you out there fighting, there's some people out there like you messing with they, you interfering with their with their financial progress. <laughs> so, so I'll tell you a quick story. Like one of my very first events, um, when, when I started the nonprofit, I was like, okay, in my brain, you know, I'm oblivious to, you know, how things supposed to be done as far as the nonprofit. I don't know shit about the nonprofit. I just know that I want to serve my community. Right. So I've taken everything I knew from the music business. I'm like, all right, I want to, I want to give them a day of positivity, right? So in my brain, I was like, okay, where's the most problems happen at right now in the city of Newark? And at that time, it was Seth Boyton to the point we called it Def Boyton, right? So I was like, okay, we're going to go to Def Boyton and we're going to give them a day of positivity. In fact, there was two homicides that that had just happened like prior, like two days before that. So I said, all right, guess what? We're going to go there. So I got my guys together, got some artists together got the the video with and bought some food and all that stuff and i was like we going into these projects and we're going to give them a day of positivity and you know because i'm from it i said all right let me go talk to the homies right and let them know like this is what we're about to do <laughs> yeah. blah, 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 right you know i wasn't i wasn't crazy now i was like all right let me <laughs> that wasn't my hood so i said all right let me go over here and talk to them cats right and the, the guys looked at me like yo man all right you know you're going all right, just be out of here before it get dark. I said, I I got no goddamn plans on being here after it get dark. (laughs) (laughs) I got you, though. (laughs) Right? So there was an understanding, Mm. right? And I knew how to maneuver, right? So now we 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 got it popping. We got the music going. Everybody having fun. I'm bringing people on on the stage. And I said, what can we do to change our community? So I started really asking the question, like, what can we do? The young people looking like, yeah, nobody want to answer. The older people, nobody want to answer. So I started taking, you know, playing mind games. I started taking the stuff apart like I was really going to shut things down. Nobody want to talk. All right, forget it. No, no, no. Let's have a conversation. You've got the young kids talking about, we got to stop the killing. You got the old people start talking about the drug dealer and they point to <laughs> they, they, they point to the guys they, and I'm looking at them like, oh shit. Like, you know, I, I, I done started something, right? So right. The, one of the cats came over to me. He was like, yo, you good, you good. I'm like, he said, you need some burgers? You you need us some, some more food? <laughs> yo, it turned into everybody jamming, everybody partying and stuff. But here it is. Nobody would go into a deaf boy and then do what I did. After I did that, I gave other people permission to go and do that, right? Because of the fact, the way I did it. Now, if I would've just came in there and set up and like, I'm bombarding, like I'm going to do this. Nah, I wouldn't have. Right. You, you know, you got to get buy-in first. And I went to them and talked to them and had that conversation that because of what just happened, y'all just had the homicide. Look at all these kids. They can't play, you know, without fear and blah, blah, blah. I had that conversation from where they stood and I was relative to them, we was able to do that. But nah, throughout my 17 years, people just trusted that that I was gonna do something good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, where we where we built the center at, it's a 9,000 square foot center here in, in one of the worst streets of North, right? Front wow. Street, notorious for negativity. The projects, all that stuff was here. And I took this 9,000 square foot of dilapidated space and turn it into a safe haven. I put my own money to it. Volunteers and other people that wanted to see it happen helped make it what it is today. And for the last 12 years, kids have been growing up in my center. So even though we have gotten, you know, it's, it's drugs and stuff that happen. They're, like, they're doing what they do, but they respect right here. Right, right, right? Yeah, yeah. They respect what it is that we do. You know, and you know, literally came and got jobs, came and got food, participate in what we're doing. You know, it's just how you move. Got to maneuver right. 
you know, because you ain't we wasn't trying to mess up their money, but at the same time, we were trying to empower them that you could do things differently, man. Like your brain, you don't have to be stuck where you at. Your situation, you don't have to be selling these drugs. Let me get you some jobs. Let me get you, put you, you know, put you to work. You know, give you some of these skills. Now I got a studio, right? Full state of our studio, radio station, videography, all in, the building. All in this building because I knew what I needed when I was a kid, right? I, I said this. Me looking for a deal, I don't have to look for a deal right now. I got distribution with Sony Records right now. So mm -hmm. I can help build artists up right now and put them out. I don't have to wait for somebody to tell me it's good enough. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm uh, saying? So I built a place that I needed when I was a kid, but I broke it down into the three sections, entertainment, education, and empowerment. Because I knew just music wasn't going to be it, right? Entertainment, all of that stuff I just told you, the studio, radio station, all that stuff is to draw the young people in. But once we got them here, we got the educational part where it's a it's a big room where we meet at, where they get financial literacy, health and wellness, grooming and self-efficacy, career readiness. They get all that mentoring, all that stuff in that side. And then we got the empowerment piece where I started realizing like, okay, now that we got them, now that they're doing the music, how do we get them in a situation where we could find out what's going on in their in their lives to be able to help them. That's, yeah, their that's where I was headed next. Yeah. They come, they, they leave school because you're like a father for the hood now. You know what I mean? You got a lot of sons now, right? So right, right. they all come to you. They all come to this, like this safe haven. Some of them are getting abused at home. Mm -hmm. Some of them ain't no food there. Yeah. Some of them just lack of love. Yeah. Some all that. All that, right? So, do you do you have a situation where sometimes you feel bad that they got to go home knowing the yeah. situation at home? And Absolutely. Yeah. So, how do you help them once they leave close? Once you see them walk out their door and they know they got to go home, how are you able to impact them and help them in that way as well? Well, I think one of the first things I did was like I hired social workers to be here as well right so now one of our long the longest uh standing program I got is called my thoughts out loud mtol we call it mtol my thoughts out loud and that's the young people coming together in a non-judgmental in that educational space we all come together in a circle and they lead the conversation and adults raise their hand to signify that they're trusted adults that what, what the kids say, that we ain't going to judge them for what they say, right? So they get to have these conversations where they lead the conversations and we get to hear what's going on. They get to talk about what's really happening in their life with a social worker. That's not acting like, oh, you need to sit on my couch and tell me what's going on with you. No, they're acting as if I'm from it. And I understand what it is, but I went to school to be educated enough so I can help you pass your stuff because I needed to help myself pass mine. So the relativity that goes on with these conversations helps us to be able to now let them know, like, look, I know it's rough right now, but it, your situation don't have to dictate your destination. It can, right. but it doesn't have to. And we're going to continue to give you these resources and love on you and show you that you could be anything you want if you perceive it believe it achieve it again going back to what my mom taught me now i make sure that all my staff is trauma-informed trained right they lead with the mindset that something may have happened even if it didn't they lead with the mindset that something may have happened so when 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 rashid or whoever come in there and he having a bad day what happened at home something causing them to act up Right? right, a lot right. of times we just want to say they bad kids. Now nah, ain't bad. Something happened. Let's find out. It's your job when they come in them doors to find out what the fuck happened. What happened? Why they acting the way they acting? And now us be a, as adults that got more experience than them become a bridge to resolution to them. You know what I'm saying? That they can trust us now to be able to get some help. I got a point now. Yeah, I, I apologize. I know, I know you're good, but bro, I told you, I told you at the beginning. Of the, I told you at the beginning. We this this she was open. I told you at the beginning. You had you can be, talk. This is how people. This, the more they know, the yeah. Because whoever's gonna end up watching this, 
mm-hmm. might be somewhere close to North Church. Yeah, they man. might pull up just to get the. You no, know I mean they may not even live in that area. Yeah, but man. it might be worth for them even come checking it out because they may not have those resources or that center in their area. No, but absolutely. That's why we're trying to build it out. Yeah, yeah I, got a tough, I got a tough question for you. Probably the toughest mm-hmm. question you're going to ask this interview. Okay. Um, in your 17 years, 17 years, correct? For 17 years, yep. 17 years. Have you ever lost a kid that you were helping? Oh, man. Oh, shit. Bro, I lost six kids, bro. Six kids and, you know, and, and I, who that, that shit deep. It just hit me again because in none of my other interviews have they asked me that question, right? Yeah. And I, I, I always try to avoid it because it's so emotional because the six kids that, had, that, that I lost, there was so much potential in them. And, you know, I had to learn the hard way that I can't save everybody. Now, before you go, before you hold that thought, don't don't lose that thought. I, I ask that for a reason, mm-hmm. because when you got a heart of gold that you really want to help people, and you lose people that 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 you that you care about, mm-hmm. was it? I want to know what, and I want people that just watching this to to know this. It's a reason for everything, right? So, was it the streets that did they get caught up in the street? Now, you ain't got to really tell me the. But I'm just asking because I want people to, if you lost them, was it the streets that overcame what you were doing, what you were trying to do with them? Or was it something else? You know what I mean? Because people need to know that side too. As good as it is when they were helping, know that everybody's not going to be, right. everybody's not going to make it. Yeah, the four of them, well, three of them was the streets. Uh, two of them was overdose right. and one of them one of them was a a, a a minor that was hit by a car you know yeah. so it you know like yeah so I, I work really really hard to try to make I'm hard on my staff and my staff will tell you like I'm hard on my staff because if you don't do shit like I do shit you don't need to be here right like I give a fuck about my kids I, I go hard for them if you're not going to do the same thing then you don't need to be here Right, so I, I make sure we get these trainings so that we can see the shit. We can spot when something something ain't right, you know. But again, I had to lose the Superman complex that I could save everybody because you're gonna lose some people, man. And and it's a kid right now that you know I'm I'm trying my damnest because I see it. I already, I see it, and I've I've been trying to grab him, trying to grab him, trying to keep him close and he peep. You know, come in and then he go, come in and then he go, and and every time I see him, I hug him, and he like, man, stop. But I hug him because I be telling him, yo, I'm scared for you, bro. I'm scared because you 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 think you know and you don't fucking know. You don't know. You young and want to want to run these streets, man, and eat you up, bro. He got shot. He got shot. What two years ago? And. and you know, everything in me thought that he wasn't gonna live, you know, but he survived it. And I'm like, yo, God gave you another chance. Come on. And he's still You God know, Denzel, Denzel, I don't know if you saw the movie uh um uh, Equalizer 2. This was the second one that came out. Mm-hmm. And he told mm-hmm. the youngin, he said, You have no idea what death is. You, right. have no, you have no idea what death is. Like it people probably just look at some movies and it's entertainment. Some messages in that shit sometimes. Message, yeah. Message. You don't know what death is. You have no clue what it means to be laying down there trying to catch your breath because you, you don't know what's going to happen on the other. Once it's just done, it's done. Yeah. You know, and I always tell people, I said, we lose people all the time. Like we did some kid that got shot the other day. And I said, I, and I tell people all the time, like, I'm pretty sure when he woke up that morning, he didn't think by one o'clock he was going to be. You know what I mean? Like he didn't wake up thinking that he thought he was gonna go through this day and tomorrow's gonna be. He, he didn't, you know, you don't wake up knowing that at two o'clock or one o'clock you gonna have a bullet in your ass, like and you're gonna be down, and you're gonna be. Nobody wakes yeah. up like that. Yeah, y'all yeah. think we got another day coming? Right, we all think it, and and you know the the one that I'm trying to save, he watched his friend get killed. 
he watched his friend get killed. And I'm like, bro, like that could have been you. Cause y'all always together. It could have been you. It wasn't. That's the guy giving you another opportunity. In your opinion, man, like in everything that you've seen in your in in, in just New York alone in, in your in your area of the world alone, what do you think is the the mental? We all know people chasing money and they chasing status and they chasing women, and they chasing all these things, but truly, what do you think is the mental reason why? Black men just have to take another brother's life. You know what? What is it that gives them that that lick? You know that, that thing that I'm gonna kill this nigga. But when it's somebody else, we don't. They don't share the same. It's not the same energy. But when it's one of our, you know, it could be an argument at a basketball game. It could be you took five dollars me in a dice game. It could be you stepped on my shoe by accident, bumped into me at the grocery store the wrong way. What do you think? What is your thoughts on that? Get to you straight how I feel. Like the historical trauma is real, man. We still suffer from the Willie Lynch shit today. You know what I'm saying? Where we we're taught to hate each other. We're taught to hate on each other. You know, the man has been the man has been exiled out of the families and pushed out, and there's a system put against us. And you know, our communities are taught to believe that we're beasts, we're savages, and stuff like that. And because of the fact that it, it's so much that's put on us and said this to us, we start to believe that because no self-identity. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if they first understood that we were kings and queens, like, we didn't live like this. You know, like, why? But because of the, the whole slavery mentality that, that has been pushed down on us and, you know, we never got above that. We just never got above that. And, and, and our job as, as responsible adults is now to be able to show a different side to, to our young people. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, people live inside of this square. And until you take them outside of that square, they don't know nothing but that. You know, we have to show them something different, give them different experiences and opportunities. And until then, that's all the mind can conceive. This is how we get ahead. You got something, I don't have it, I need it, I'm gonna take it. And that's yeah. up. Here's a here's flip side to that question too. Mm -hmm. You just said the young boy that you're trying to save now. Yep. Right. He saw his friend get killed. You would think that would be enough. Yeah. To 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 see that and to lose somebody that you with every single day, you would think that would be enough to, to, to tear you away from the streets or somebody that you know that went to jail and had to go do time. You would think that would be enough. Why isn't that enough to turn people from from the streets, from violence, from from drugs? Why do you think they they, they just keep repeating the pattern? Why isn't that not enough to stop them or, or turn them to go through something different? The only thing the only thing I can say to that is that it it, it starts with fundamental principles, man. Like you know, again, if my mama never told me that I could do anything, I'd probably be out there doing the same dumb shit right because it was easily accessible to do the dumb shit it was easy to do the dumb shit than it is with the positive shit you know you try to do positive stuff you know how many times i got ridicule ridicule for doing good shit but because i had so much positive influence you know it was like i right, i'm good you can say what you want i'm good but when it's the flip side you start to believe it and once you believe that it could be positive or negative. Once you start believing it, it becomes real. Perception is reality, you know, in a lot of cases, man. So, so we just got to change that, man. Yeah. Help us become better. Yes, Mr. Sir. Hub, CEO, founder of Hub Arts and Trauma Center out in New York, Jersey. Um, on, right here on the live, on, on the Tyler's Lounge you know, show, we just, this, this, this is not about Jersey. This is everywhere. Everywhere. This is every community in America, every hood, and there's a hub in every community, in every city, in every state. Now, in, I, now I want to talk about your trauma center. I want to talk about what you provide these kids and how you assist them. So now let's talk about help us become better. First, I, would, I, love, I love the name. I love, I love it. So how did you uh, come up with that? And let's, let's talk about, I want to know 
what all services and things you to provide kids. I was literally having a conversation one day, you know, like I knew I was going to build the center out and it was originally supposed to be called the Why Cry Academy, right? We Heard Your Cry Academy. Legally, uh, we're legally doing business as the Hub Arts and Trauma Center, but the legal name of my organization is FP, standing for Future Potential Youth Outcry. So it, the, the whole idea always was about hearing the cries of our youth and responding to them. So the center was supposed to be about the why cry. We heard your cry. The youth are crying out. We heard your cry, right? Having a conversation one day, uh, like how how do we help us become better? Like we we as a community, we gotta help us, you know, each other become better. And I was like, I'm an acronym king. So I was like, oh, H U B B. Yeah, that's it right there. And as we start doing the work. I was like, let me add another B, help us become better and take it about arts. But I want to be able to make sure that we work on the trauma because that same question you just asked, until we fix that, until they start identifying with the trauma and stuff like that, we're going to always have these situations where people dying because they believe that that's what they're supposed to do. Killing is normal. Like robbing is normal. No, it's not fucking normal. No, it's not. It shouldn't be normal. You shouldn't right. feel like that's that's okay because it's not okay because you can go 15 minutes away from here and see that, no, they gonna protect they shit over there. Mm -hmm. But right here, you feel like because they don't put shit here for us to be able to have what we need, the resources that we need so that you can see your value. They do that on purpose. It's a system put together. But anyway, I can go off on my soapbox. <laughs> hey man, you know I'm, I'm I'm really enjoying this conversation because it's a um I had to bring I might have to bring you back again, man. I might have to, might have yeah, to bring you to the studio and and, and and do it and do it in person, man, um, or even come there. Um, I would love, love it, man. I would, I would love it. Now, uh, love it. go back to something real quick. Mm -hmm. The guy I was talking about, his name is B. I don't know if you can see that. His name is uh, let me turn this. His name is B McFly. No, I don't know him, but I'm gonna I'm definitely lock him down. B McFly. Yeah. B B dot M C Fly. Okay. Yep. B B dot McFly, and he's uh he's actually part of Cameron and Mason's sports show now. Uh, okay. He's been doing this for a very very long time, and. Um, the brother, the brother's out there in them streets, man. He's out there getting okay. busy, and and sure. I was just and I was just relating this situation with George because so many times, even in our city, they killed somebody that was for the community, man. I'm like, how do you kill somebody that's actually trying to help? Like, what right. kind of shit are we on? And how much hate do you have to have to take somebody out that's actually doing something good and ain't bothering you, right? And that's yeah. that's why I asked you that question. They tried to take him out, man. They and they and they, they they tried. They, they 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 really shot his car up like real bad. Um, when when you hate yourself, man, and you don't love yourself, it's easy to do that to somebody else. And that's why we got to teach it within, letting them know like yeah yeah the value, you know. And, and again, your situation, whatever it is that you're going through in life, it doesn't have to be your end all. It don't. Right. It don't have to be that. It, it definitely can be because you can see examples around you that it can be that, but it doesn't have to be. Cause here's some other examples of what it can be. You know, you love, you respect what I do and how I do it. I ain't out there killing nobody. I ain't robbing nobody. I'm doing it the right way, you know, in the right way for you, me. You, you know, not to cut you off, but mm -hmm. the, the youth today, in my opinion, they seem very hurt and they seem very angry. Of course. Even we as kids went through shit. Like we went through this trauma never stopped. It didn't like it started with <laughs> this 18 to 25 year old group. Now in 2023, like it's been going on. Especially these kids didn't grow up in the crack epidemic. When 80, when 80, when 1985 hit Detroit, LA, and that pipe hit, like that, that I think Detroit had like 800 murders that year. Mm, yeah. Just imagine being around in that time. Right. So, why why is it so different today? Why is it that the youth are they're, they're displaying their um, pain and their hurt differently than what we did? We, for my era, 
Nigga, we just deal with it. You know what I mean? We get up the next day and we keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? And you know why we was able to do that? I'm glad you, this is a great, great question. We're, we was able to do that because it wasn't replayed over and over and over and over again with social media, right? Yeah. Where it, it's a constant reminder of what's going on. You could be disrespected today and somebody capture that and you never get to live that shit down because yeah. now yeah. it's always replayed. So one of the things that, and, and in my thoughts out loud, these, the young kids, especially the guys, talk about respect, right? I'll kill you over respect. You know what I'm saying? Just because I felt like you disrespected me, right? So where's the level of mentality to understand that where's the respect for you? You know what I'm saying? You know, for other lives, you know what I'm saying? Like just cause somebody, and I, I'm using this back in our day cause somebody stepped on your sneaker, you know, you ready to fight, right? Now they'll kill you over that. You know what I'm saying? Well, it was, you can't live another day, you know? So we got to change that. The social media and information highway has just been crucial helpful but crucial yeah. in another way you know like man you can't live shit down now you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look, look, look we look we all we see the memes and stuff we all excited about us us gathering together and fighting back like you know and that's how it happens with these young people they i think one of the beautiful things about our young people today is that they ain't scared they no shit. they're not right they ain't scared of shit so if you mobilize them right right and and and, and we we can we can create the change that that needs to be because they're just that fearless enough to demand the fight the look look what happened with George Floyd. Look, the, the whole world stood up the whole world and it was led by young people because young do people you think, had had do you, think, do you think that they have trust issues with the older Adult. generation where <laughs> I know they do. I'm definitely <laughs> I'm saying like as far as because you mentioned you said we mobilize them right. We we get them to, you know, um and I think that's one of the things I do like about them. They to me they they what they, they don't have a certain stance they stand on. But one thing they will stand for, we we will we will fuck you up. That's right. So, so I think I think we got to be the adults that, you know, we got to be understanding enough that things are different than how we did it, right? And utilize, like I said earlier about us being the bridge to resolution for them, understanding that they're going to do their way, right? And we got a way. We got to be understanding that we can help them in that process and not try to over, over talk them, overthink them and all that stuff because that ain't going to work because they're going to rebel against you. So to, to infiltrate, be in, in the mix of it, to help them in that process and help shape and mold how they think. Then you could be able to utilize them when you organize and galvanize them in a way that they can move the right way. And, and, and we've seen it a perfect example again with George Floyd, right? The problem with us now is that we get lullaby entirely too quick because they'll throw something else out there and then we forget about the fight that we had in the yeah. first place, right? So we 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 got to change that. Okay, man, Mr. Hub, help us become better. Yes, um, sir. One thing we have not even said in this in this in this conversation, we, we I, you know, I've not asked you about a website or phone number, or nothing. Oh. So I, <laughs> social media. How can people get a hold of you? Everything is that hub life. All social media pat, uh, platforms is that hub life that hub life and our website is that hub life.org um with hub remember it's two b's t-h-a-t-h-u-b-b-l-i-f-e.org you know and all social media platforms is that hub life man okay, I totally now, appreciate you, man. what's the end goal with hub life is it is it to be a national um organization that's going to that can go city city state state and help or is it just going to be homegrown for your your community in, in north it started off with homegrown, but like I've been asked to bring the hub in several different cities and states that, thus far. And for the last two weeks, I've been having some major conversations with um, with Rwanda, Africa, right? So global, right? Like global model 
of what this work do because the hub you know how we do it in our methodology is entertain educate and empower it it doesn't matter where you're at right like, utilizing those things utilizing the arts to draw them in educate them while you got them in and peel back the layers so the goal is to really place it in different places we're building out another one in the west water north right now but i got Sicklerville, new jersey that we're getting ready to build out i got axe for some baton rouge for uh texas um vegas the thing is i'm i'm always challenging people to you know make sure that you ready to do the work i did the work here right so it's hard for me to go somewhere else and do what i've done here but if i got buy in there it makes sense to do it like we need space and we need resources right you got that i, I created the resources and space here to be able to do it so it is a perfect model we are willing to teach it and put it other places is one of the things that uh, you guys teach there is how to work a job how to fill out an application how to do an interview how to perform on a job because today's youth man oh if that's yeah. one thing i criticize i criticize them big on is the lack of work ethic the, the work ethic is just not yeah. there it's just crazy man career readiness career preparedness yes that's part of what we teach and, and it's funny that you said that because i think one of the ways that we've been funded for the last two years through the state is high risk intervention right intervention is hiring the credible messengers to come in here and do the work but we took it a step further here at the hub we hired the young people that were out there doing the, doing the crazy stuff we took them coupled them with the credible messengers that already did the time and all of the other stuff and then we take the social workers and the therapeutic art mentors and we have these conversations but we hire them so we get them prepared for work right but now the young people see know whatever's going on in the community way before everybody else do right mm -hmm. so now pay them to be able to help de-escalate come on man that this should be happening across the world but it's not and, and we've been able to do it and now we're in the process of building out the very first youth focused trauma recovery center as well and because these young people said they need it they need it congratulations man um, appreciate you bro man I, I truly I don't even know man would I even this conversation this one thing I like about one thing I love about what I do is just let conversations grow on their own and, and be organic mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. I had my talking points I ain't hitting not one of them <laughs> because I just <laughs> I didn't hit not one of them the only one I actually hit was about the hub movement right <laughs> um gotcha. but be, because when you just let conversations flow and, and, and you, you find out so much, right? And so I think we've given them a uh, a lot in this in this in this hour. Um, on top of that, donations. You just told me you you, you, <laughs> you got buildings in in, in Jersey about to build all the way to Vegas, so you're gonna need donations. And now on the website. Can they mm -hmm. donate on the website? Absolutely, absolutely, and, and it's a big bowl too. <laughs> <laughs> we made we made it easy to donate. Um, is there something that you know? Is there something you would like to tell the youth, not only in your um, in your city, but just the youth in general? You have a message for them. Yeah, man. I, 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 there's two things. Well, I'm going to say three things that I, I always try to leave with. I hope you don't mind me leaving it with you as well, man. But there's three things. I, I say that we said it already, but just situation don't have to dictate your destination. It just don't. I need you to understand that. I need you to believe that, that your situation does not have to dictate your destination. And I'm going to go with the next one is every interaction is a transaction. It is. Mm. It's a chance to learn, grow, or teach. And if you blessed all three in this conversation like today, like bro, listen, I'm 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 very intentional about okay, what am I supposed to get out of this? Am I supposed to be listening? Am I supposed to get this? Or am I supposed to be giving? And it's blessed when you can get all three. So when you be very intentional about every interaction is a transaction, you're gonna learn so much more out of life to be able to give to somebody else or yourself. Right. But the last thing I'm going to leave you with is Mayor Raz Baraka 
we was in a um in a meeting and I said this and and now I feel so proud that he he mentions it a lot today but hurt people hurt people yes they do but heal people and healing people can heal people mm. important I love that yes heal sir people, heal people can heal people that's that I, I yeah, you know what? I always ask people these questions at the end, and I always get different answers, and I love them because everybody has a different perspective. But it's all one common goal, mm -hmm. and that's that's just to get that's just to get better um, right. and live a better life than where we at now currently. Um, I want to thank you, man. Um, I didn't know what to expect today. You know, I did oh, check man. you out in a few interviews, so I said it's going to be a great conversation. But I didn't know what to expect. This was dope. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. And, and listen. Yo, call me anytime, man. Like you, you can take my direct number because I, I love the conversation. I love the flow, and there's so much more that we can unpack, man. Because I think that you got a platform that people can that need to hear. You know, need to hear you, and that you're versatile to be able to open up to having the dialogue, man. We like you said, we could have went on this this topics like, <laughs> but you 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 went deep in to where we were going to be able to get the fullness out of it. And, and you made me relax to be able to give it the rawness that it needed. Cause a lot of times I'm 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 catching myself like, oh, all right, you can't say that Tariq. You know, you got funders that may see this shit. You know, <laughs> you know? But it's it's all love though, man. That's the, yeah. that's the one thing people gotta understand. Even if you cuss, even if you express yourself, it's all leads yes, back to the four letter word. You yeah. love what you do. You love your kids. You love your community. It's all love. And, you know, people got to stop being so sensitive what people are saying and how they say it. Just understand there's a message behind everything. Right, right. That's why I tell people, wake up, goddammit. Wake up, goddammit. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mr. Hub, you already know we in the building. We in the building with ties up. Look, wake up. I was about to say, okay. yeah. <laughs> wake, wake up, well, God damn man, it. Um, um, when we get off of here, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to, uh, I got to end this because I don't want, they don't need your, we don't need this your personal number going live. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but no, man, thanks again. Anybody who wants, hey, if you want to get a hold of Mr. Hub, give him the website one more time. You can also donate, follow them on social media. Stay informed, stay in tune. If you're on the East Coast and you just want to be, you need you need some help, you need some assistance, you don't got none in your area, you can go to New York, Jersey. And if you don't, you don't feel comfortable, make you no know, put a call in first. You know, get some. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know, guess what? You invited though. Come on up. Come on down. Come on down because if you need the services, we here and we don't turn nobody away, especially no young people. So let's go. That hublife.org. All social media is that hub life. All right, man. Thanks so much. Don't just get hey, and like I always tell people, each one, each one, reach one, teach one. Wake up, goddammit. Wake up, goddammit. <laughs> Wake up, goddammit.